episode of the Donnie Mays Coaches Show presented by Generations Physical Therapy Centers. Seven convenient locations from Charleston all the way down to Grayson, Kentucky, and one right here in Hurricane over on Tays Valley Road. Jack Withrow alongside with Hurricane head coach Donnie Mays. Donnie, a tough one down at Spring Valley, but a battle of two very good teams. Two very, very good teams, and uh, I feel we're, we're still a good football team, mm -hmm. and uh, we just came up short. Uh, they did a nice job uh, with the – you know, attacking us the way they wanted to, and uh, they kind of kept the ball away from us a little bit, had some nice drives, and punched in there one more time than we did. I think the special team blunder kind of hurt really bad at yep. Stung because it was right off of a an opening two-play drive that kind of had momentum our way, and then they just responded right back. So uh, we got to get those things fixed, uh, making sure that we have our guys in their proper lanes, and uh, and when we get an opportunity to wrap up, finish the tackle. So yep. little things like that we can – we can work on it it felt like and we talked about it at halftime you and i it felt like a heavyweight yeah. bout between two boxers and just landing body blows there especially early when you guys like you said scored on the second play of scrimmage yeah. they came back with a kickoff return for a yeah. touchdown and then you guys came back and riffle reeled off a 50-yard touchdown yeah. made it 14 to 6 and people hadn't even had their popcorn and coke yet yeah another two-play drive so yeah. in, in four plays we had two touchdowns and we were doing a good job moving the football on them. And, uh, you know, we, when you have momentum like that, you just want the ball back. Mm -hmm. And I think we kicked off to them. And um, it was a little longer drive than what we expected. But at the same time, like, when we got it back, we were still moving the football. We moved the ball all night. Yeah. I felt like we did a good job. We just – we were careless with the football at times. We had a couple bad snaps. Um, just little things like that. Um, really did a nice job of – uh, when we went on two of holding, you know, mm -hmm. holding down, holding it down and not jumping ourselves and got a couple first downs off that. So, like, there was a lot of positives in the game, and it just shows you where you can be. Nobody nobody likes to play on that field, and that's a tough place to play anyway. It is, but, yep. But we had a chance at the end to win it, and, uh, and it just came up short. Again, talk about uh, – I know we've seen it all year long, but that up-tempo offense, we saw it again – and I was on the sidelines this week, and as soon as the ball was down, you, you guys and your coaching staff are screaming, let's go, let's yeah. go. And that's what you want, that up-tempo offense. Yeah, we like to go fast. Yep. Um, it depends on, you know, the officials and, and, and all that of how fast you can go. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little surprised that we were snapping the ball with uh, 27 seconds on the 40 second clock because we're our goal's 32. Yeah. Um, the reason I was surprised is because Spring Valley was snapping it with 24, and you know they're not trying to go fast. Right. So, right. Uh, um, I, I was I was trying to speed that up a little bit. So I had some questions to the officials of what we could do to get going faster, and it's not knocking them. It's just yep. maybe we were doing something wrong. But we talked to our linemen about getting their hands down in the dirt quicker and. That way, the official would spot the ball and move out of the way. Yeah. And uh, in, the, in the second half, I thought everything kind of clicked. We did a little. We didn't score as many points as we did in the first half. We weren't as explosive, but we had better drives mm -hmm. and uh, ran the ball well. Riffle again did a great job, and uh, the other two backs came in and gave us, you know, what we needed. Yep. You guys led 21-19 at the half, and then it was a little back and forth. Again, you led 28-25 at the end of the third, and then. Th Talk about that fourth quarter. I mean, it was just back and forth. You guys made a great defensive stand there to give you an opportunity at the end to win that ball game. Yeah, um, great play. I think it was Elijah Rivera came up and mm -hmm. tackled the uh, back for a uh, right at the line to gain uh, a line of scrimmage, and he didn't get the line to gain. So, yep. um, and they had a cramp going on over there, so it slowed down of what. We were were we going to get the ball? Were we not? You know, yeah. I was trying to measure it myself <laughs> and asking them where he was standing, and he told me, and I I knew we had the ball. I mean, I knew it was at least you know a nose short. Yep. So we started talking and just kind of game planning to get going for offense. So we had three or four plays that we already had set up that we were going to go with. I know you don't want to really live these things, but uh, take us through that last series down to where they got the interception that sealed the deal for them. We missed a couple opportunities, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, I, and I've, I've expressed it with some of the kids, and we've talked to them about what happened. And, uh, you know, we like I said, we had a couple bad snaps for the night, but they all happened on that last drive. Kind of yeah. put us in a situation, but that, you know, we also, before the bad snaps, we missed a wide-open receiver. Um, 
Mm. So those things kind of add up. Yep. But the last play of the game uh, on the interception, we were – I kind of two plays before looked at how they were defending our trips. And um, they had basically four over three and two over one. Okay, for the illiterate guys, uh, uh, what's that mean? So we have trips – we had trips to the left. <laughs> And we had uh, definitely a guy man-to-man on our number one, mm-hmm. our first guy. And then they would play this uh, – it's like a cover two coverage over the next two guys. Okay. We had a backer, safety, and an outside backer. So they were all pulled towards the trips. And on the single side, they were doing like what we would call just the basic look of cover three, where they had an apex defender inside of our, our one over there and a corner deep. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the box, now you have a five-man box. We had five um, offensive linemen. They had four five. downs, yep. and they had one linebacker. <laughs> um, and what we were, I was looking at is just I was wanting to see what that linebacker was doing. Was he triggering on the snap? And he, he, he certainly did. Yep. So whenever he did that, I, we, we just basically ran an old-school tight end pop pass, but we did it with our running back running out back. of that <laughs> look. And, then, you know, I mean, if we set the protection the right way, we hit it in the mouth, the blitz. And, uh, you know, we sent Mondrell right up the middle, and Noah kind of threw it off his back foot a little bit. But the outside backer for Spring Valley, he was uh, he, he was not doing his assignment. He was kind of cheating, but he made a good play. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and what I mean by che- – I don't mean cheating. I mean, like, he was, he was like, kind of keying on something that he probably wouldn't be taught. Mm-hmm. And he saw Mondrell run vertical, and he – made a great play uh, on, you know, I think we underthrew the ball a little bit. Yep. Um, we were supposed to run a verticals with runoffs with our receivers, but we had a guy, you know, we ran a slant on it, but it pulled two pulled defenders in. in. Yeah, so but we were supposed to run a vertical and pull those guys away and get the one-on-one with the linebacker, and if he blitz, you should walk right in the end zone, yep. um, even on a third and 17. So it was kind of a, it was a crazy scenario, a lot of pressure. The kids were under a lot of pressure, um, but I told him, I was like, you know what, you've been here before, you know, and we took the ball back with four minutes. We marched it right down the field with mm-hmm. two minutes to go yep. in the game. And and we and, and all you can ask for is, is to have a chance. Yep. And I think our kids battled hard. And, I, and I, I'll tell you, the response um, today was very good. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, the focus is now back. And sometimes those things can be good. Yep. Uh, I don't like to lose. And it makes you angry, and whoever gets in your way is going to pay for it the next mm-hmm. time. So uh, um, the kids know that. They understand that. But I think the response was really good today, and the kids are locked in. And it, it just shows you in, the, in this game and in sports in general uh, the little things that matter. And it's the inches, uh, and you talked about, you know, a, a kid cheating over just a little bit yeah. when he wasn't supposed to. And uh, But those are the little things that matter. And the details is what uh, wins games sometimes. Yeah, so. well, I know that. I know for a fact what was being taught to him because I called Dingus after the game. And I said, <laughs> man, I said, surely you don't teach him to do that. And he goes, no, he was actually <laughs> supposed to get underneath the trip. So, yeah. so that's what I mean by by cheating. I mean, but, th- but at the same time, the, like credit where credit's due, the kid made a great play. He read the play. He saw what we were trying to do. And that's instinctual. And that's some things that you can't teach. And mm-hmm. a lot of there's a lot of kids out there have that in instinct. Yep. We have yep. a few ourselves that yep. have those instincts. Yep. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue to recap the Spring Valley game from Friday night right here on the Donnie Mays Coaches Show presented by Generations Physical Therapy. Generations Physical Therapy is a Tri-States Championship Partner for Comprehensive Physical Therapy and Sports Rehabilitation Services. Access to physical therapy has never been easier, with extended hours and walk-in services available. Generations Physical Therapy, multiple services, multiple locations, experience you can trust. Welcome back into the Donnie Mays Coaches Show. Jack with her alongside Coach Donnie Mays. And Coach, we want to keep on the recap of that Spring Valley game and go through a couple stats. And again, senior running back Jeremiah Riffle Another, well, I say this every week, I think, but another big game Friday night 21 carries, 195 yards, yeah. and two touchdowns. That was a 50 yard touchdown and a 49 yarder. And you know, he's doing this against good football teams. Yeah. And it's each and every week. Uh, was it averaging right around 170 or something? Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, the kid's putting himself in mention for the Kennedy Award, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got to continue to win as a football team. And, uh, 
and carrying his heights, individual accolades will follow. But uh, right. he's definitely putting himself in those can, those those terms. Yeah, Riffle for the season, 75 carries, 686 yards, seven touchdowns. That's over nine yards per carry and 172 yards per game. He is having a wonderful start to his senior year. Andrell Dean on a Friday night, five carries, 33 yards. And then you have Elijah Rivera. You call him the lightning bolt. Yeah. Uh, he came in, had a couple of carries, 15 yards, and a touchdown for you. It was good. I mean, they, they all did their job and trying to put people in places to have a lot of success. I think that uh, the running backs do a good job. Just, you know, I mean, there's there's only one football that goes around. But, yep. uh, you know, uh, I think right now I think Jeremiah is kind of the bell cow. He's going mm -hmm. to lead us. But we, we've got two other guys that uh, we have faith in. And if we need to get him in the game, we're going to. Yeah. Uh, sophomore quarterback Noah Villatombi, another uh, good game, 12 of 21 passing, 160 yards, a touchdown. He yeah. did have the two interceptions, but yeah. he's just a sophomore. He's still learning, right. and you know that, and he knows that. Yeah, and so. that's, that's part of the film study in there. Mm -hmm. And then, like, in no way, shape, or form are we, you know, calling out kids on this right. show. We're trying to, like, teach them little mm -hmm. things of things they can do to get better, and he's he's one of them. I mean, like, his completion percentage, we're going to have to drive up a little yep. bit. and be more consistent with the ball and he worked he listen that's a kid that you know his entire off season he was um doing quarterback training in in ohio um and working on his hip and stuff like mm -hmm. that so like when we get out here and do film study it's easy to say hey where was your hip you know what mm -hmm. were you doing and yeah. and he picks up on those things but um uh the, the interception that he threw the other night the first one um he did that against capital uh, if you remember, he was getting sacked and kind of threw it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I think now he knows. Like now, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it just has to register because yeah. I think in there he was like, yeah, I'm just going to take a sack. So. <laughs> yep. uh, on the receiving uh, on Friday night, Tyshawn Dews, three receptions, 82 yards, uh, had that 73-yard touchdown reception on the second play of the game. Go, go through on I – mean, you guys came out, you threw a pass. It was almost intercepted, that for, uh, intercepted yeah. on that first one. And it seemed like you went right back to that similar play. Well, I mean, yeah, it looks like that. And yeah. I heard uh, Chris uh, Lawrence and those guys call it like that. But uh, really what I was trying to do on the first play was set up some type of motion. Mm -hmm. Now I wanted to see how they moved and did, did you know, their secondary with motion. And then the very next play, we just stayed put and just ran a little skinny post with Tyshawn. So um, yeah. it, was, it, was a good, it was a good little play. And really it just, like, we got to find ways to get him the ball more. I mean, yep. he's so explosive, and uh, and that goes for all of our receivers. Like, you know, Tyshawn had a good night. Bryson had a good mm -hmm. night. Heath had a good night. You know, I mean, Heath's thing is he he, he had some, a bunch of targets, but he also had some great blocks. Like, he, yep. he sprung free a couple of long runs. So, yep. uh, the receivers, uh, overall, they're getting better each week. We talked about some things in our schemes that they're going to have to do to get better going down the future. If they want to beat – big time teams they've got to do little things so mm -hmm. uh we focused on that today at practice yep you talked about heath uh, five receptions 29 yards for heath bryson morrell two catches and 40 yards uh for those three that was a, a good night for them uh the defensive side you talked about earlier elijah rivera coming up and making a big, a big tackle yeah. on that fourth down that was huge i mean you get anytime you can get the ball back that was big and uh he came up and just made a great stop. And I watched, you know, he dove through the kid's knees basically and, mm -hmm. and tripped him up. And, and, you know, the next thing you know, um, we have an opportunity. And that's all you can ask for. Yep. Again, I, um, when I was down on the sidelines, and I, I don't know why I forget this. I've been down there so many times. I played the game in college. It's a violent game. Oh, gosh, yeah. And Mondrell Dean, and I was telling you, he is playing a violent game right now, but under control. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of scary when they can throw a screen pass towards your sideline and you, it looks like Bobby Boucher running <laughs> to hit him. So, uh, yep. you know, he's he is all over the place. Yep. And uh, um, he, he makes a lot of big plays. Um, he's so athletic, you know, and then, and he's surrounded by a great supporting cast. It's mm -hmm. the, you know, the back end's really good. Um, the linebacking core, I, like yep. I'd put him up against anybody. Oh, yeah. You know, those three guys. Lucas Ripito and Cam Phillips and Mondrell. And then, you know, when Mondrell goes to the end, Joey Keanu comes in. And mm -hmm. you, you saw Joey yeah. against George Washington. And he got to play a lot against Spring Valley. So he's getting some some prime time. Just a sophomore. Right. And just a sophomore. Yep. A good good player. Yep. And our D-line man, like Jacob Ellis. And mm -hmm. uh, 
Nate McKay. McKay. Those guys have been so disruptive in the middle. Yeah. And I thought Ramey and uh, those guys played uh, yeah. good too. I think I think I mean like that's the thing that we talked about is like making sure that we protect our edges better. Um, you know, if we get an opportunity to play against those guys again, but uh, but you know, it's it's football, and uh, yep. we're gonna we're gonna make sure that uh, we put our guys in the right spots to make plays. And uh, I felt like we were we were we were close the other night. We just got to get the we got to get the ball back quicker. I yep. felt like we were on the defense for quite a while at times the other yep. night. Great game, like we talked about. It was a great atmosphere on Friday night down there. It was wonderful to see the sea of red that I always talk about of Redskins fans. Boy, they follow, don't they? They're, they do. They're great fans. This mm -hmm. is a great community. And, uh, I mean, you just uh, – and sometimes, you know, when you're coaching, you don't think about those little things. But, I, you know, I kind of turn around sometimes to kind of see if I can see my wife or kids <laughs> in the stand. <laughs> you can't There's see. No way. <laughs> and, but uh, I, I appreciate these, these fans coming out mm -hmm. and supporting these kids the way they do. And, you know, one loss does not define us, and yep. I, I'm sure the Redskins fans understand that, and they'll be there uh, to support us this week yep. at St. Albans. We'll take another break, and we'll come back. We'll take a look at the next upcoming opponent in St. Albans right here on the Donnie Mays Coaches Show, presented by Generations Physical Therapy Centers. Generations Physical Therapy is a Tri-States Championship Partner for Comprehensive Physical Therapy and Sports Rehabilitation Services. Access to physical therapy has never been easier, with extended hours and walk-in services available. Generations Physical Therapy, multiple services, multiple locations, experience you can trust. Welcome back into the Donnie Mays Coaches Show. Jack with her alongside Hurricane Head Coach Donnie Mays and Coach. Our next opponent is the Red Dragons of St. Albans. They've got a first-year head coach in Willie Washington. Uh, I've known Willie for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, John Booker coached with me at South Charleston, and they, their cousins and uh, played at St. Albans together. Probably, I think they played at St. Yep. Albans together. Uh, Willie's a great guy. Um, I know what he's trying to do up there with that program, and uh, you know he talked he talked to uh, you know in full detail at the coaches uh, thing up there at uh, mm -hmm. the South Charleston, and I mean he's doing he's doing what he can. I mean. Uh, he, you know, one thing I know about Willie is he's resilient, mm -hmm. and he's going to keep fighting. So I can see that, uh, you know, with their football team. Yep. Starting out the season four, the Red Dragons 0-4, 0-3 in MSAC play. They lost 52 to nothing at Parkersburg yeah. to open the season. And then the Battle of the Bridge, uh, they took a defeat there, 37-13, and then 59-12 to at Riverside. And then last week, they were beat 35-6 to by Capital, who we've played already. Yeah. Uh, they've got a first-year quarterback in Eli Sampen, Samples. Excuse me. Um, he's a, a basketball player and decided to play football, so he's out. He's a good athlete, good size. They also have a couple other uh, key players in running back Eli Little John and a quick uh, uh, wide receiver in Chris Hall. Um, going through this week, and I know um, it stings to get a loss, and you talked about that. Yeah. Uh, how are you preparing now? for St. Albans in your next game? Not just like any other game, but I think our kids um, understand the importance of a rebound. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it today. I mean, it, it makes you angry, and whenever you get angry at something, you know, you generally you step out of the way of that person because you don't want to deal with them. So yep. that's kind of how we're going to be. We're going to try to be the angry person because we are not – we're not happy. Yep. I told them in the thing, if you enjoy losing or you start accepting it, you're at the wrong school. Um, they heard the message loud and clear. Um, they came out today, practiced their butts off. They were focused. Um, I had a coaches meeting prior to, and they came out here, and they, they, they knew exactly what to do to get started with practice because it's like a routine. And mm -hmm. they went ahead and just kind of got things kicked off a little bit with one of my assistants. And we came right out afterwards and just took off rolling. They were ready to roll. So um, I feel like as long as we can uh, keep our focus, I think – uh, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but I told them last week that was one of the worst weeks that we've had of practice since I've been here. Mm -hmm. And and I think I talked about it on the show. Um, y we had that emotional high against George Washington, and then all of a sudden you're trying to keep that that going. So yeah. uh, there's got to be an evil or like an even yeah. uh, type of where you want to be on your even keel. You know mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. But uh, I think we we understand that now, and uh, you know it really doesn't matter who our next opponent is because if we focus on us and we do the things that we need to do, um, everything else should take care of itself. Yep. And, and you and I have talked about this before. And I think you've got, uh, especially the upperclassmen, um, some, some guys on this team that are very mature. Yep. 
and you could look to those guys, and you talked about like guys like Keith Montgomery yeah. and Bryson Morrell. L Lucas uh, Ripito. Right. Yeah, like those they, those guys them. are just like coaches on the field. For Absolutely. Them. And uh, and nobody wants to win more than them, you know. Yeah. Uh, no one hates w losing more than a coach and a player, I can tell you that. No one wants to win more than a coach and a player. Um, you, you work too hard uh, yeah. to come out there, but unfortunately that's part of sports. There's going to be a winner and a loser. and. Mm -hmm. We did come up on the short end, but I can tell you that we, we are, we're going to rebound, and, and our kids are ready to do it, and, and I expect them to do it in a strong way. So pretty much everything normal going through practice this week, getting ready for Friday night. You got to fix your errors. You got to fix you. Um, and that's an every week thing. It's every week. It's an every week thing, but that you know you kind of you have more of an emphasis on it when you lose the game. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, Sometimes, you know, you got a guy that does a route wrong or something like that, and, eh, you know, you're like, all right, is it that big of a deal? Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, the attention to detail is the most important thing with football. So that's whether you win or lose. So we're out here watching film and, and, and showing these guys this stuff, on, on and, and you can see it. There, it's like it's an eye-opening experience for some of them. They're like, holy cow, yeah. you know, we could have done this. and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like I said, we're going to take it game by game. Try to go one and zero this week, and 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 whoever we're playing, we're gonna we're gonna give it our best shot and go get it. Yeah, because uh, I missed a biscuit uh, Saturday yeah, morning. That's a, and, uh, that's a that's a shame because yeah. uh, you know those are fun <laughs> Saturday mornings. But yeah. uh, at the same time, like like I said, it's part of sports. We're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna get us some more biscuits this year. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, coach. Well, good luck on Friday night. I believe it's a seven o'clock kickoff it's a good question that I is a good I question i will know more <laughs> i will know more tomorrow yeah. i'm sure so, <laughs> you never know uh but uh keep it to our uh, there is a facebook page on uh for hurricane football yeah. and maybe the information will get there uh but uh friday night at crawford field yeah. uh it will be hurricane and st albans kicking it off in another msac battle uh, and we hope to go 1-0 and, and get a biscuit on Saturday. Coach, thanks for joining us again this week. Hey, let's, hope, let's hope next week's a little bit better show. Hey, we're open next week, by the way. So yep, we're going to have to figure something Open's out. Open's undefeated. They've never lost a game. <laughs> it's true. We can have a biscuit on the That's open right. week. We can have a biscuit on the open week for sure. Yep. Thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, this has been the Donnie Mays Coaches Show presented by Generations Physical Therapists.